Hello everyone. My name is Akanj Kothari and uh, you all know that I explain uh, concepts related to medicine. Now, apart from the teaching videos, there is a new section of videos that I'm getting into this channel. That is the video podcast. Okay. On this video podcast series, I will be getting students and teachers from medical and non-medical background who would be talking about their exceptional journeys in national and international examinations. So the first guest today is uh, Shamak Cooper. Uh, Shamak uh, is a fourth year medical student in one of the prestigious university of India, that is Seth GS Medical College and KM Hospital. Uh, he scored uh, exceptional marks, that is 254 on the USMLE Step 1. And on a personal level, uh, Shamak has been a great mentor to me and uh, he has always helped me out with any queries related to the preparation or uh, how about how to go about the question solving. So thank you so much, Shamak, for coming over here and sharing your experience. No problem. No problem. Thank you for calling me. Uh, so I would not like to you know waste more time. I directly get into the topic. So uh, sure. what is the importance of USMLE step one? on the entire matching process or uh, like the interview residency and what is the importance of this examination? Okay, so earlier, I mean, up until recently, this was a scored exam. Okay. And according to the new news article, up mm-hmm. until, I mean, no earlier than Jan 1st, 2022. That's the statement. Okay. It's, it's going to be pass or fail mostly after that. Yes. So yes. looking at that, it's not going to be a numerical grading and it's not going to hold that much importance because it's just going to be pass or fail. Okay. But before that, it was very important because people did consider that as a bracket, as a filter for people. Like okay. even if you look at certain residency programs, mm-hmm. some won't take below 250, some won't take below 260. Oh. So it was a very significant exam. But I guess you guys would have it easier because it's just going to be pass or fail. Okay, so... Uh... The USMLE step two then might become more competitive, yes, right? Because step two CK is now the on, only one which should have a grading, which will have yeah. a numerical grading. So that's going to be a very important exam. Okay, so step one is going to change to pass and fail from Jan 2022. Okay. Not before Jan. Okay, so it is not confirmed yet, right? Yeah, it's not confirmed yet. Okay, now uh, let me ask you, like, uh, what is the exact paper pattern of USMLE Step 1? How long it is? How many questions are asked? Like, what is the exact paper pattern? It's a huge paper, first of all. You'll have <laughs> seven blocks. Each okay. block will have 40 questions. So you're going to give 280 questions. Okay. And each block is going to last an hour. Oh. So you'll have a written paper of seven hours with a hmm. break of 45 minutes. Oh, in so between. it's a very long You paper. can use it any time. It's, it's huge. And you and you can use the break mm-hmm. only after a block, not during a block. Oh. And in the start of the exam, you'll get a 15-minute tutorial as to how the computer is going to function. So if you s- choose to skip that tutorial, you get those added 15 minutes in your break. Okay. So it's a 7-hour plus a 1-hour break. So that's like an 8-hour long exam. Oh, so that's a pretty long period of exam that you have to sit in the examination hall, right? And uh, what are the basic uh, subjects which are involved in USMLE Step 1? Like on which subjects are they tested? It's your first and second year subject. So you'll have first year anat, physio, biochem. Okay. And your second year, apart from forensic medicine, obviously, you'll have Mm. patho, pharmac and microbio. And in addition to this, you'll have subjects like biostatistics, epidemiology, public health. I'll show you a photo, I guess. I can screen share of my sc- of the score report where they actually tell you how many questions were asked from which subject. Okay. So can you see this right? Yes, yes, I we can. So if you see this, pathology is around fifty percent of your test. Oh, so the major chunk is pathology, right? It is. And these are all the disciplines where you're getting asked from patho, physio, pharmac, biochem, stuff like that. Wow. This is the first time I'm seeing a score sheet. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so, so you much. The whole, yeah, no problem. And uh, my next question to you is, uh, main, which is... Main, 
thing is pathology. Okay, so the main subject is pathology, right? Uh, one of the most frequently asked questions of all medical students is uh, when should a person be taking his step one as an international medical graduate? See, according to me, if, if your college is allowing you to bunk postings, okay. you should give it in your third year. Because okay. the thing is, your third year postings are going to be comparatively lighter and easier. And even your third year subjects. Okay. So if you bunk those postings, I'm not saying to bunk, but if you bunk those postings, <laughs> okay, you can cover it up easily, and you can even give your third year exams much easily. Okay, so and a person uh, can have a substantial amount of time. already fresh. With... Yes. Okay, and we're fresh with you saying something. I'm sorry. Yeah, you were fresh with your first and second year subjects because you're just done with your second year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you, according to you, it should be given in third minor. Third. But people, I have friends who, whose college don't allow them to bunk a lot of postings. Hmm. So they are giving it in final year. They hmm. are even giving it in internship. And okay. some are even taking a break later on and giving. I mean, you can give it any of the times, but I guess the most preferable one should be third year. Okay. So does it matter like, uh, you know, reading the final year subjects and giving or it doesn't really matter uh, because you have to stick to the primary resources. Yeah, for step one, I don't think it would matter because step one is not, not going to be based on those final year subjects. Okay. You need to remember those first and second year subjects. So it's going to be an added goal to read those two, sub, two subjects and your final year. Okay, so we need to primarily focus on the first year subjects, right? First and second year, yes. Okay. Yeah, the next question to you is uh, how much preparation time is required for an ideal IMG or international medical graduate to you know prepare for USMLE step one? I guess it should take around seven to eight months. Seven to eight months should be fine. Okay, and how is the study process? Like, what is the you know timeline? Where how much do you study? So consider you are in second year and you're the fag end of the second year. You're almost done with your second year core subjects mm -hmm. from the standard textbooks. So you have an idea of how subjects are. At the end, like around uh, October, November, December, you can start your preparation by either looking at some video sources to add up to your standard textbooks and refer to your first year subjects through video format. That's okay. one technique and that would last for around three months, I guess. It will last for around three months because you'll give your final years MUHS and then you'll be out by Jan. Okay. So then you're finally free from second year and then you can ramp up your studies. I mean, after you're done with reviewing your first year sub and second year subjects through videos, you can then go on to the more intensive phase, as you say, of okay. reading first aid and reading much more USMLE oriented books. And that would last for around three to four months too, because you will be supplementing that with questions, question okay. banks. Okay, so, so what are the... Okay, so it should be around about six to seven months, right? For an ideal score. And how many hours, if you would say, to study per day, or it doesn't really it's, matter? Like, it depends see, from it person to person. depends on person to person. Yes, it does depend from person to person. But you will be primarily in your house for a long time because you'll not go to college if you're bunking. You'll be okay. stuck in your house with those books and question banks. So you need to... You know, take enough break because you'll go crazy then. <laughs> okay, okay. And uh, coming to a very important question, uh, which is the gold standard resources that are used for, you know, USMLE step one, as they say? So the gold standard would be U World Question Banks okay. and First Aid. Those are like, if you don't do that, you cannot give step one. You okay. need to do that. Okay. And this is just, and that's a review book. First it is a review book. So you can't start off with that. You need to have a basic understanding for it. So to supplement that, before these, you can either watch Kaplan videos and you can e either choose Boards and Beyond, which is a new resource, which people have recommended a lot. And these are the video formats. Once you're done with that, for books in pathology, except uh, in pathology especially, it's definitely Pathoma. I myself have read Golian twice. Okay. I have read Golian, but I don't think a lot of questions have come from Golian which are not in Pathoma. 
Okay. I mean, Pathoma should be the best resource for pathology, along with their videos. Okay. Okay. So for pathology, that's that. For your reviews, it has to be first aid. For a question bank, the main question bank is U World. You got to know U World every question, and it's a lot of questions. Around two thousand eight hundred questions, I guess. No, it has increased now to three thousand. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And counting, they'll always add up. And if you want to supplement those with, you know, some other question banks in your earlier phase, in the non-intensive phase, you can go for Amboss or RX or Kaplan question banks. These are the three which I know. Okay. And uh, according to people, RX is too factual. It goes on very detailed points and not that conceptual. Okay. Kaplan in that way is much more conceptual in their questions. Okay. And if you want certain other resources, um, there's a book called BRS Board Review Series. It's especially good for psychology, uh, physiology, and there's another book called Hundred Cases by Con. Fisher. Okay. It's about bioethics. That's okay. another book that people try to do. Then there are certain flashcards. People use Anki flashcards. They are famous. Okay. Then for micro, there's a sketchy micro. I haven't used it. I mean, people who like to see and remember, that's a great resource. People use that a lot. Okay. And so sketchy is basically pictorial. Yes, it is. Okay. And yes, especially a certain video section in Kaplan. In Kaplan, all the subjects aren't necessary to watch, but certain subjects which are definitely very important according to me are biochemistry by Dr. Turco and pharmacology, the old videos of pharmacology by Lionel Raymond. Okay. And if somebody wants, they can even use Kaplan for biostats and ethics. It's okay. a good resource overall. Okay, so the primary two that you would be telling is first aid and U World, right? And then you have to supplement those textbooks with different kind of video resources to con build your concept, basically. Yes. Before okay. those two main first aid and U World, I mm -hmm. really suggest you before that you start off with the videos or I mean other resources, BRS and all, because th that's a review book. You won't get it directly. Okay. Okay, okay. And uh, what was your U World, you know, first pass score or the second pass score or whatever it is called as? Mm, I don't remember, but it should be around 80%, I guess. I mean, it doesn't matter actually how much you score in U World because okay. it's a learning tool. It's just how much you can learn from those questions, not how much you already know before. Because okay. people tend to confuse that. They're like, I solved 40 questions, but I'm not getting 40. I mean, that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, it's it was me. <laughs> you just okay, need to okay. learn from every question you give in your world because a lot of questions are almost exactly like your world okay so how many and now coming to the uh, you know after the question bank part how many times should you will be solved like it should be solved twice thrice or the incorrected questions you know what is the yeah. pattern you should, um, should be solving your work? What I did was I solved it once completely and during solving, I used to mark certain questions. So I had marked roughly 1500 questions and okay. so apart or including the ones which are already wrong. So okay. after I did that, the first pass, I went back and did all the marked questions and the mistakes. Okay. If you think you may know the mistakes because I've already done them, but you still get a few wrong in them. Okay. So what I suggest is you do it once. Go mm -hmm. back to the marked and mistaken questions. People okay. have done you were thrice. Some people have done it twice. Some people haven't even done it once. Oh, okay. But I really suggest once is the like like the baseline. You need to do it at least once. Okay. Okay. Cool. So someone has to like do it. You will at least once, and then you have to just go about the marked questions and the incorrect, like the incorrect questions. Okay. Now, going to the NBMEs and the practice tests, uh, like when should someone be taking their NBMEs or what is the, actually the you know concept of NBME? See, because even I don't know about it. NBME is an assessment tool. It will assess you as to how ready you are to give the final okay. exam. There are, I guess, the new uh, papers from 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. These are the new NBMEs. Okay. And there's even NBME 18. Okay. It's still there. So... These are actually very important tests and very good tests. The questions here are new. The questions here are different. 
they may not be the actual length of the uh, main exam questions but they give a very fair idea of to how the questions can be mm. and how much you score their scoring is the most important in nbme you're giving an nbme to know how much you can score because the nbme grades you according to the other people giving that nbme okay. so it's fairly like the final exam okay so i don't think you should give an nbme before you're ready i had given it once i was done with u world and once i was done with all the other resources and i was like okay let's see how good i am now okay so how many nbmes did you take or how many in all the practice tests have you taken and i had taken all the nbmes because <laughs> i thought might as well do every one of them because what if there's a question in the other nbme which does come in my exam hmm and it just and it gives you a grading like you just want to see yourself get more marks in every nbme okay and i did all of them and what i would say is nbme 18 is a test which has been going on for a long time and that gives you apparently the most accurate grade okay because so many people have given it over the year okay. so i think you should leave that for the end but one disclaimer the questions there are very simple they are <laughs> very factual and those questions are never going to come in your main exam okay but it gives you a fair idea of how you scored because even if you make a small mistake they might drop your score a lot because other people have gotten that right okay so the nbme 18 right nbme 18 okay so and what was your nbme score like it was very close to your actual marks or was I it i started off with an nbme score i guess of 240 okay. and i was like okay let's see how far it goes i gradually went up and i guess the maximum i got was 259 so okay. i mean it's fairly accurate it's fairly accurate hmm. i i had a friend who had got 278 or something in this nbme i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay that's fine it happens okay okay apart from these uh, nbmes there are u uh, world self assessments uws is there are mm. two of them mm. they kind of over predict your score i got around 266 in that so it kind of over predicts by 10 marks those okay. are also good every all of these papers have different questions okay so they're just adding up to your bank oh so you see more questions right yes. because of these uh, exams and It's always better to see more questions rather than not seeing and thinking during the exam. If you already seen it, might as well get it wrong before the exam. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, what kind of a dedication is required for a person to you know give USMLE step one? Like how much someone has to be dedicated? Like you know, it's not like a normal college exams that we have in India, right? Yeah, you uh, can't just take it in like three months. You need a lot of time and a lot of patience. Okay. People, I mean, you need to dedicate at least seven, eight months, as I said. and during that phase people do tend to get bored they do tend to get irritated because you are not seeing your friends you are not going to college okay. you are just at home sitting you are just bored of reading the same questions solving them again and again so you can kind of lose your patience at the end <laughs> okay the thing is apart from dedication you need to even know when you reach your peak for example okay. if you can't say i'm going to study one year of this because you reach your peak intelligence or peak acumen around 8 months hmm. and you said no i want to try and go more but you're plateauing if you keep at it you're going to fall then and people have gone through this people have lost their scores because of this okay this so was you, a very important point that yeah. you told me so once a person starts reaching the peak you should just give this exam right yeah because what else can you do you've done all your you world you've done your first aid you've given all you've given nbmes and you're like you know you're at 250 255 255 255 255 you can't I mean, if you are not able to go more than it, just I should give it off. Okay. And what is actually a good score of USMLE Step One? You know, which is a filter, which uh, like most of the residency programs, you know, allow you. See, according to certain residency programs, like if you go to see Harvard, those three residency <laughs> programs don't take below two fifty, two sixty. They will not allow you. Okay. But they. now looking at the pass or fail thing. people are going to look at the holistic student they're going to look at everything that the students done i mean research articles interest hobbies you never know okay. so now at least for you guys and the and the juniors it things may change because if it's pass or fail it's not going to be a filter anymore but okay. a rough filter what we had thought of was at least about 240 is like at least about 240 or at least don't i mean at least the average average of all the students at least get that much okay okay 
So a 240 and above might, you know, clear you all for a good residency program. Okay, not talking about the Ivy Leagues. Ivy yeah, Leagues might also but, go to 250 and 260. Yeah, but now this 240 also may be a little too old. I mean, before the pass or fail also, the competition had increased so much that our seniors, mm. every single one of them got about 250. Oh. So we were like, now we have to get about 250 because our whole senior batch got more than 250. Yeah, I mean, you are from a college where seniors are also very smart. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, uh, one question that is, uh, what if, if you had to take USMLE again, step one, then what would you do differently than you did? Uh, I guess I would have focused more on bioethics, biostatistics, okay. epidemiology. Because I'll tell you one thing, in the exam, you are mm-hmm. definitely going to get these kind of questions, which are not in any standard books like Kaplan or any, you know, Ambos notes or whatever, Ambos videos. It's somewhere out of the blue. Okay. So you need to try and get your resources of this two, three subjects, biostats and epidemiology from other resources. As I said, BRS is one book. Mm-hmm. Ambos has around 130, 140 questions on this. First aid already has a lot of information. U World already has a lot of questions, but in my exam, I got at least 10, 15 questions which were not given anywhere. I was okay. like, where is this coming from? Oh. I had zero idea about those questions. Okay, so you just have to be so, you know, smart enough to ignore thing. them. You need to just have an idea that you need to focus on those weak parts where you are and also on those parts where you're, know, where you're knowing that they're going to ask certain out of textbook questions. Okay. And uh, another thing is that in this 280 questions, seven blocks, 40 questions each, a lot of questions are experimental. So those are not going to be added to your grand total. They're just to see how the other students are paired in those questions. So a certain easy or difficult question may actually not be graded. So that's just like a silver lining. You'll be like, I didn't know so many questions, but they might just be experimental questions but you don't so, you never know right you never, know it's an... you never know so you can't just leave it oh it's tough it's an experimental leave it <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so uh, the last one last question of the entire podcast uh, that uh, what if the, the for the students who are preparing in their third minor or second year or students who are you know they're in their internship are preparing for the USMLE step one like one piece of advice from you that you know they might start boosting their score or what they should be doing a lot of people would have seen is they take it too seriously and they get too much into this no i need to think of this i need to think of this and they complicate themselves and they get this one important thing is even during the exam you need to keep your calm it's an eight hour long exam it's you can't lose your cool in that one patch and lose all your hard work that you did in those eight months okay even myself, my first question, I didn't know what that question was. I was like, I have never come across this question. What should I do? So if you lose your cool in the first question, you can't give the remaining questions even if you know them. Okay. So the main thing is just keep calm during the exam. And during your prep, you're going to lose your shit. I don't know if I can say that. You're going to lose yeah. it. <laughs> and so I guess when you're ever bored or tired or whatever, just call your friends, go to college, just attend some posting and come. I know it seems nerdy, but just it's a fresh breath of fresh air. You need to do something else. Or just stuck okay. at your house for a long time. Okay. It's so like a pre quarantine we had before this thing. Okay. No, because I've got this quarantine for you know preparing, so it become a really good, good thing, thing for me. Yeah. Really a very good thing for you guys. Yeah, it became a very you know, it became a bliss for me. That uh, I got a quarantine period, but now also I've just started. It's not even like, you know, I'm doing, but okay, mm-hmm. it's going on and going on. But I understand. Get stuff. Get stuff. Okay, okay. So, thank you so much. And okay. I really appreciate this. You've always been there to help me at least. And doing this podcast, you know, it was really helpful. And uh, guys, if you want more such videos, please, you know, click down the subscribe button and uh, let me know which kind of videos you want. Okay. And uh, thank you, Shamak. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.